The mid-90s were a cacophonous hellscape in the world of PC gaming. It seemed like every Best Buy in the land was having a constant clearance sale of big boxed computer garbage. A hundred games on one CD? How could you pass that up? Of course, you had a few standout, influential titles that everyone knows and need no introduction. So I won't introduce them and we'll move instead to an overlooked game from the how can we sell this, I don't know, just do a point and click, I guess, era. Bad Day on the Midway is said game. It is a truly bizarre experience, and something worth playing, but more on that later. First, a little history. I wish, honestly, that I could tell you that I stumbled into a store as a younger version of myself in the 90s, found this game in a bargain bin, and proceeded to play it, love it, and have nightmares about it since then, but that's not the case. I was turned on to Bad Day on the Midway recently by a fan in my Discord server, and another fan, who insists she's not a furry but probably is, helped me get it running on my modern computer. So, what makes this game so special that I went through all this trouble just to play it? For me, all I had to hear was, it was made by The Residents. To those unfamiliar, The Residents are an influential avant-garde music group that has a strange obsession with the macabre and the surreal. They also have an interesting love-hate relationship with the Third Reich, but I'll touch on that in a bit. If you haven't heard their music, go home, sit alone in the dark, put on some quality headphones, and just experience one of their albums from start to finish any of them, they're all pretty solid. So this weird band made a weird game, so what? Well, it's a spooky horror game and I wanted to do a spooky horror episode for Halloween. There you go. It plays like your average point-and-click adventure, except even easier than the standard affair. You don't have items or quests, you just click to move your character around the creepy eccentric theme park known as the Midway. There are all sorts of weird rides and attractions to experience, and they all leave a strange, sour sensation in your gut's heart probably. The best way to describe it is this. It's a game made by the residents. Along with the park's exhibitionary structures, you'll find on display several human sideshows, all with their own tragic and eerie backstories for you to uncover. Some of them will just reveal their story to you, while others need a bit of detective work. The neat gimmick about this game, though, is that you can switch between any of the characters you see. This nifty little eyeball will appear on the screen whenever you can change perspectives, and you now see the world through a different set of eyes, as displayed in this crystal ball. Speaking of eyes, there are a ton of eyes in this game. There's this one on the cursor, this eye mirror ride, these spooky peepers. What is it with the residents and eyes? And Nazis. There's a character in this game named Ike, who has visions of a perfect Aryan future, and tries to use his business as a means to propel his propaganda into the open and eager minds of the youth that pay visit to his park. You'd think Third Reich and Roll was enough Nazi satire, then they drop this character on you. But Ike is just one of many in the colorful cast of misfits and freaks that make up this game's characters. Each one feels more unsettling than the last, almost like something out of a David Lynch film. Which is ironic, because this game was slated to be turned into a TV show, a la Twin Peaks, but the project was canned when the Resonance and Lynch couldn't agree on a script. Spooky. As the game progresses, you'll probably die. Not you, literally, but the character you're controlling. That's where the fun comes in. Bad Day on the Midway is designed to be disorienting. The park is cyclical, yes, but it feels so easy to get turned around. I almost never got a grip on where I was situated within the world. On top of that, there are some random elements programmed into the game. Characters may or may not appear in specific places on separate playthroughs, so walkthroughs of this experience are hard to come by, but in order to learn the whole plot, you have to play as different characters during key story events to untangle the knots of mystery. It's hard to explain, sort of. What I'm trying to say is this. The game expects the player to play multiple times, and you should if you want to see everything. I don't think I had a session last more than an hour, with most being closer to 20 minutes, so it's not too much of a time sink if you want to play through it a few times. There are multiple branching paths and a few unique endings, so again, it's worth trying to see everything. It's a bit hard to recommend this game if you're not a die-hard Residence fan, but if you're willing to emulate the entire Windows 95 operating system to get this to run, it is one of the most disconcerting and uncomfortable experiences you may have in an adventure game. It really is a twisted tale, worth taking the time to unravel. Hey, thanks for watching. Head over to my Discord server if you want to suggest a topic for a future video. If you want to, whatever, Patreon, Twitter me, Facebook me, all of it, I use it. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, do it all. Do it all. Do it all. I love you. Gosh, mister.
You look tired. Life is tired, little boy.